Welcome. This is a selection of slides from a presentation of July 3rd given at the Wolfram Summer School at Bentley University in Waltham. The actual talk was two hours from 3 to 5 p.m. I summarize here the talk in a few minutes. The main object of this talk is a delta set. It is a hypergraph with a notion of derivative and dimension. It is not only simple, but also clear and general, analog to the Unix mantra. I myself like brevity. It allows to write programs like a poet. Here is an example code which takes a graph as an input and produces the data structure of a delta set. It produces the set of simplices G, a Dirac matrix D and dimension vector R. Another poem example is a self-contained code which takes an arbitrary manifold, like here a four manifold, and computes a codimension 2 or codimension k per surface. This can be done in arbitrary dimensions. Brevity has tradition in computer science. Turing showed that a single tape with a mechanism to write and change states produces languages allowing to compute anything. Quote. It was created in 1993 by Swiss physics student Urban Mueller, where the goal was to create a language with the smallest possible compiler. It had 240 bytes. Here is a computation of the Mandelbrot set written in BrainFuck. There is an interpreter you can access online. I myself was sure that AI would fail to write an interpreter of BrainFuck in Mathematica, but it did. Here is that interpreter code reformatted. It's a little bit silly, but is there a brain fog theory of everything in physics? Dirac, Pauli and Bohr liked simplicity and also having fun, like one sees on these pictures. Also Kepler played around with simple explanation approaches to the universe. Today we are in an interesting phase of physics where we do not know how a theory of everything looks like, how a grand unified theory will be. As mathematicians we have lots of tools available. Here are a few. Whenever we have calculus, a derivative, we can describe some important phenomena using functions and equations. One can use mathematics to generate theorems, even so it might look like a blasphemy. In the discrete everything is much simpler, uh, similarly than AI makes it simpler to generate slides. Here are a few reasons for doing finite geometry. It's a philosophical reason we shelter ourselves from future disasters. Data science, economics or physics are all motivations. First, the formalistic approach of Hilbert has shown that uh, it doesn't provide safeguards after Gödel. Uh, constructive mathematics is less risky. How can we define what a sphere is? Today we can do that nicely in finite geometries or delta sets. It is a space which is locally Euclidean, meaning that unit spheres are spheres in a smaller dimension and can be collapsed if a point is taken away. The finite was addressed already in the paper of Riemann defining Riemann, Riemannian manifolds or Riemann surfaces. Finite geometry can be done also over finite fields, but that's a different approach. More realistic and closer to uh, computer science is to look at data samples of space. We can only measure finitely many points and then define a graph where two points are connected if they are close enough. The early quantum mechanics folks already used differential equations and talked about quantization of space. Arthur Roark in 1939 observed that experimentally we can only measure finite data. <coughs> Snyder talked about quantized space-time Finkelstein somehow thought about finite objects to describe space. <clears throat> also here are some papers of famous pioneers in computer science. It goes until today when studying finite emergence structures using new approaches. 
finite structures come in different forms. We can look at sets, we can look at graphs, quivers, simplicia complexes, or delta sets, hypergraphs such as set of sets. But it doesn't come with a natural derivative. That's why delta sets, we have to have an interesting Dirac matrix on it. Graphs define a natural set of sets, simplicial complex, which can be computed using the Whitney functor. We just look at all complete subgraphs. It's a hard problem, NP hard problem, but it's implemented here in Mathematica different ways. One with a library. I wrote once a from scratch recursive algorithm to find all clicks. Quivers are more general than graphs in that also multiple connections or loops are allowed. We define a natural one-dimensional calculus. I used this recently in a paper dealing with the spectrum of quivers, eigenvalues of the Kirchhoff Laplacian diff grad. So there is an upper bound and there is a lower bound. And here is an illustration of these eigenvalues are sandwiched between this upper bound and lower bound. And here's the code which illustrates this. It can be accessed from the LaTeX source on the archive. Samuel Eilenberg also invented category theory Accessing delta sets using a computer science approach is quite effective. We have a finite set, a matrix, and a vector, which then allow to do geometry form products, look at level surfaces, look at quotients, look at orbits of group actions, look at open sets. A nice topology has been defined by Havel Alexandrov on finite simplicial complexes. Here are just a few theorems dealing with Euler characteristic folks who have worked on Euler characteristic. Here are some features which are unique in the discrete. Four features. First of all, we have curvature constraints which do not exist in the continuum. There's the stability of the vacuum. If you look at connection calculus, there are no singularities. We look at SAR. Non-cumulative coordinates emerge in the discrete. Let's look first at the curvature configuration constraints. Victor Eberhard was a blind geometer who has seen them already. Stability of the vacuum is probably the most important open problem in physics. There's an attractive force which you can measure when you put two plates close together, which can be explained using the Casimir effect. A third interesting feature in the discrete is that level sets never have singularities. Cumulative coordinates. Coordinates have been defined by Descartes in 1637 in La Geometry, related to the problem to define a Cartesian product. And that's in the discrete a little bit tricky because the Cartesian product of simplicity complexes is not a simplicity complex. Here's the discrete SAR theorem, a general function from the vertex set to a finite set, defines then a manifolds of lower dimensions. So this is here illustrated in two dimensions with level sets, contour sets, and here in higher dimensions, hypersurfaces in R3 or co-dimension two surfaces of four in four dimensions, some pictures. This is all done completely in the finite. We start with a manifold like a four-dimensional projective space, discrete, and we look at level surfaces. Finally, one can ask whether we will see calculus without limits appear in the classroom in future calculus courses. I'm teaching a traditional calculus course this summer, multivariable calculus course, where we use the continuum and limits and derivatives and integrals. Maybe here is a future syllabus where we do everything in the discrete and can instead of doing it in seven weeks we can do it in one week. There's a problem to define geodesics in a simplicial complex or graph. We would like to define geodesics in the discrete like here. This is a simulation of a geodesics on a geodesic evolution on a cube and the, there is the the front, the wave fronts become more and more dense here. This is something we are trying to prove this summer. It's an interesting problem also on a torus where 
the mathematics should allow to actually prove us that the wave front becomes dense. In a general manifold, Riemannian manifold, we can look at the wave front and then there are tau sticks which emerge. And we expect that the wave fronts become dense eventually. Something else I'm working on is quadratic cohomology, which is also in the framework of delta sets. The Dirac matrix is just more complicated. We look at pairs of simplices instead of simplices themselves. And we can look at spectra problems. We can look at cohomology. We can look at invariants like invariance of knots in three-dimensional spheres. That's something I would like to compute in the future. This is the end.